Welcome to a Friday Reads where I talk about what I read, what I'm reading, what I hope to get to next, and if you haven't seen my TBR video, this is a month where I'm really challenging myself to get through a bunch of books. Um, and it's going well. Um, I'm filming this on April 6th and I already have read like 1800 pages this month, which is what I need to do to get through this, and I have finished I think four books and I'll probably finish another one tonight. It's great, and I'm actually enjoying a lot of what I'm reading, but we'll get into some things that are a little more mixed in my plans. But anyways, what did I finish on the first day? I finished two books. One was short, and we'll talk about it real quick. That's Bloody Summer by Carmen Maria Machado. This is in the new Trespass collection by Amazon. They had a forward collection a while back, and I think this is the new one with a bunch of short books by authors. I actually really like a lot of the authors listed in this collection, so I plan to read more, but this one worked for the shapeshifter prompt for the readathon because it had claws on the cover and I liked it but I was really thrown by it because it's written like an academic piece and to the story's credit I could not tell if it was based in fact or not and that was really throwing me like trying to be like is this a real place in Pennsylvania that we're talking about so I want to reread it again because it's pretty short I generally liked it, but like a lot of the Carmen Maria Machado that doesn't resonate with me instantly, I think I need to reread it knowing its project and things like that. But, but enjoyable. I'll talk about it maybe more at the end of the month, especially if I get a reread in. I also read The Anomaly, and I did this for my local book club. This is the astronomy prompt, because it was the top of my TBR. It was actually the first thing I started to read in April. I just didn't finish it as quickly as Bloody Summer. And I really liked this one. I think for me, it does a lot of what I want Blake Crouch books to do for me, and I just enjoyed it a bit more. I also listened to the audiobook while physically reading at times or switching back and forth. I had a pretty chill day in the lab, so I basically was listening to it on my way into work, then listen and read it on the bus, and then I was listening while I was doing an experiment, and then I read it during my lunch. Like, I was just reading it. <laughs> all day and I kept wanting to read it. I was really curious about the problem that was presented and I kind of want to be vague because I do think it's a book where the discovery is the intrigue. You're just like, what is happening? Like, what's what's the play here? So I'm excited to see what we end up talking about at book club. Um, and also, this is, I think, my first translated work of the year, which is quite exciting because the original is in French. So those two I finished on the first day and then I <laughs> decided to pick up Middle Game, which is a reread for me, and I devoured this in two days. <laughs> this this book, which I read it the first time through pretty fast as well. I think my first read, I read it in like four days. This is a very consumable read, and I was buddy reading it with Jocelyn, and I just, I love this book more than I think is reasonable. And she had a pretty fun time with it and also read it in two days with me, so it's a pretty consumable read. And it was really fun reading this after having read Over the Woodward Wall. So I read this before over the Woodward Wall was published. And then I read Over the Woodward Wall in anticipation of my reread of this because I do know it's meant to be a metaphor and that it was important in world. I forgot how important it was in world, so it was really cool to get that context. I don't think there's a correct order in which to read them because the novella is really, like I said, it's more of an analogy, a metaphor. It's more of a companion to the world you're in. And I, I just love this so much. This is a comfort read for me. It is up there with like comfort movies for me, like Pacific Rim. I don't really know how to describe this book, but <laughs> basically if you love really strong ride or die platonic relationships, I would pick this up. If you are someone who's ever felt othered, who feels like you're really good at one thing and are defined by like this thing that you're really good at, I think this will resonate with you. I just... I have a fun time with this and I actually liked the world building and plot of this a bit more on this read probably because I let myself read the ending a bit slower this time because I knew what would happen on my first read I blazed through the ending because I just like needed to know and I think that meant I was a little confused and jarred by where things went so I'm excited to read the next novella after Over the Woodward Wall um, later this month and be ready for seasonal fears in May. I also finished my challenge read for the challenge video I did last week. I had to read this. This is the book, the fiction book that's been on my TBR the longest. I think it's been on my TBR since like, ooh, 2017? Yeah, 2017. <laughs> And I read it, and I think the reason why I was putting this off is because I have seen the genius, um, I don't know if it's National Geographic or what, like there was a show on the History Channel, I think, or one of the 
Ge- I think it's National Geographic. I don't know. There was a show about Einstein, and I think then they had one on Pablo Picasso. And I don't know if that series kept going, but I watched the Einstein one. And in that one, I did learn about his first wife, which is this this novel about. And I assumed, because there really is not much known, there's a lot of speculation about their relationship, how she helped him with special relativity, she was a physicist in her own right, what happened to their first daughter, etc. There's a lot that is not well documented or known or based in historical fact. And unlike with Hamnet, where we don't know a lot of stuff about Shakespeare and his family life and his kid that got lost, presumably maybe by the plague or something, that's like so far away in the past, like hundreds of years. This is like less than a century in the past (laughs) and we don't have good notes on it. And so there are a lot of liberties taken and some of them I think are fair. They make sense. And others, it's they were too similar. Like the show in this had the same stuff. So this wasn't a new story for me. And if anything, I thought this was a little bit too harsh based off how little we know like I don't know I just didn't have a lot of fun if only because I'd already seen a version of this story and this is very similar to the version I saw and not different enough she was not vib- more vibrant than who she was in the show as like a supporting character but this whole book's about her uh, it, it just I don't know it is what it is I know why this was given to me It's about a physicist. I'm a physicist. Like, I understand how this ended up on my shelf and why it was gifted to me. But I do think my instincts are right that why I was holding off reading this was because I didn't think it'd be a new, exciting story for me. And I actually do think I point people towards the genius show over this because I do think that one at least has a bit more facts in it than this one. But again, everything around Einstein and his first wife is just... There's a lot of speculation. They really only have their correspondence and letters. And I am positive that Einstein was not good to his first wife. But I do think the liberties taken here into his character are a little rough. Like, it gets a little rough at times. And it's like, we cannot know if this is how this played out. Like, we do not know. And Einstein's just too real of a figure. So I, I don't know. It was weird. It's fine. It was very consumable. The audiobook was nice. Uh, did I finish anything else? I think those were all of the things <laughs> that I have finished. And now what am I in the middle of? Well, the thing I'm probably finishing tonight is Kaikei, which is so good. Oh my gosh. And I want it known that on a World Hoppers video, I predicted that this would be a book of the month book. And it is. It gets completely a book of the month book. (laughs) Makes complete sense. It's going to have a really large, wide appeal. And I'm so excited for this book to get hyped and for people to read it and have fun. I'm really liking this because I do not know the original source material. And I'm excited to look at that source material after I read this. So I do not know where we're going. There are allusions to parts of her story. And she's like, oh, and I've heard when people say blah, blah, blah about me. And then we go into the events and like this different interpretation so very similar to Circe I haven't read Ariadne but I assume similar to that and I love her she's an amazing character to follow and I think I just really like a character that's put into a challenging position and seeing them rise to that challenge and use the tools at their disposal I don't know it's great and it's full of tension and a lot of magic and I'm also enjoying learning about different parts of the Hindu mythology or religion through this text because I think the author's done a really good job of introducing different stories about the gods in a way that like even though I'm not familiar with these gods I am really enjoying the stories when we do get snippets I'm really liking it it's really fun also has strong familial sibling connections and i think that's another reason why i'm really enjoying it so hopefully that keeps going i only have like a hundred or so pages left and really excited to get back into that i also started shadows of the short days i actually have made progress on this book that i've owned for over a year <laughs> And I'm liking it a lot. I'm excited to dig into this a bit more. Um, Definitely really glad that at the front of this book, it has a pronunciation guide and a glossary because uh, this is an Icelandic-based fantasy book written by an Icelandic author and definitely pulls from a lot of the spellings and pronunciations and the folklore of this island. And I really like it. And it's way more modern than I expected. I don't know why. I think just because fantasy is typically not set in a modern setting unless it's, you know, marketed as urban fantasy. But this very much is a more urban, modern setting. And I'm really liking our two main point of views. And it's a more modern style take on rebellion and protesting and things like that. And I'm excited for that because I knew this would be rebellion fantasy. But I guess I I really was expecting a more traditional fantasy experience. And none of this is like that. And it's really exciting the different races of people, the different political tensions. I am liking both of the main characters. There's a cat. So I'm excited to get back into this. It's really fun. It's a really underhyped gem of a book so far. I mean, I say that having only read 77 pages, but I'm really enjoying it so far. Another one I picked up, Children of the New World. This 
It's a short story collection. We have read the first two stories, Evie and I, and I'm liking it. These are really consumable stories um, with really simple, basic thought experiments to start them out. The first one I liked more than the second one, although I've liked both of them, I would say about equally if I had to give them star ratings or something. But the first one had looked into um, they had adopted a child and they wanted to make sure that this child had a connection to their culture because they are Chinese and the parents are white. And I guess in this world, you can basically get an AI robot that knows all that culture. And I think he was called Yang or something. And it was their relationship to this robot in their family life, but also what happened after basically he, he fails. He, he's a machine that is dying and there's no way to fix him. And I thought it was honestly for 25 pages way more touching than I expected. And I also just, I really appreciated all the little touches and commentary that were in there and what it made me think about. The second story is more about um, what is real, what is, you know, memory, what is reality, virtual reality, because in this world, people could make very vivid memories. And it's about someone who works at one of those companies who maybe gets in a little too deep, which so very Black Mirror, but it was fun. And I didn't see where the story was going and I was interested by the ending. So I'm excited to dig into this more. He has a really readable writing style, so that's been really great. I also have attempted The Justice of Kings. And I have read 50-ish pages, and the writing is really not for me right now. So I'm hoping to get the audiobook from my library. I just requested that they buy it, and they said that they bought it, so I'm now waiting for it to be in the catalog so I can get it, because I'm struggling. Like, I've been reading a lot, so obviously I'm in a reading mood, but whenever I pick that book up, I'm just like, what's that sentence? I've had to reread sentences. There are certain grammatical choices that are correct that I'm not used to reading, Where so I take a double take, and I'm just like, wait, what? This is how this sentence is being said? And I don't think that's the book's fault. I just think that my brain is really struggling. It's very descriptive, which isn't a big issue. I just don't care what it's describing. <laughs> and it's first-person perspective, as I knew it would be with Helena, but it's very passive and removed first person perspective, which as we've learned from Ancillary Justice is not my thing. So I'm struggling. What little I do know about Helena, I have not enjoyed. Like, I don't think it's bad character work per se, but I just, she's kind of annoying to me. <laughs> I mean, she hasn't done much yet. Like what few thoughts she has given me in these 60 pages of being my primary perspective. Um, I just, I don't know. I, I get the sense that I just don't understand her character and she's jarring to me and a little grating at times. So I don't know. I'm going to try the audiobook, but this might just be a book that's not for me. And that's a bummer because a lot of people have really loved it. And I was hoping that's why I, I wasn't going to request this book on NetGalley because I looked at it. And I'm like, this doesn't look like a fantasy book for me. It's low magic. I don't think it's going to be for me. I don't really care about the law and order themes that much. So I didn't, but then everyone was giving it five stars. So I'm like, oh, maybe I will really like it. And as I said in my TBR, it's going to have to be writing and characters that help because of the low magic and the murder mystery, isolated world building sort of stuff. And it's really, it's really a struggle. I'm very disappointed in it. But otherwise, I think I only have one other thing I'm in the middle of. Like I said, I've been reading a bunch and that's The Gates of Europe. So this is a nonfiction book, one of the two that we'll be doing for Jess Owens Nonfiction Book Club. I don't think there's an official announcement video yet, but this will be one of them. And it's mainly because I don't have the Justice of Kings audiobook or any other audiobook that I can use for a book right now. And it's really cool. I, I'm really liking it. This one is more of a broad scope history of Ukraine starting from ancient Greek times up to, I think, 2015. And I'm currently in the very, like, I think we're barely entering AD time period right now and I'm enjoying it. But I mean, I just love learning about that stuff and it's helping me gain perspective to a parts of geography I'm not as familiar with. So I'm like having maps out and I'm looking at things, learning the names of different ancient civilizations. It's been enjoyable. It's like a fun, like self-taught history lesson sort of thing. I don't know. So I'm sure I'll get more angry as we get more modern, but currently, as I look at like ancient times that are so far removed, you can just academically assess it. It's been enjoyable. So what am I gonna get to next? A bunch of stuff. The plan is to get through so many things. First and foremost, um, Shan and I have our buddy read of Infomocracy starting next week, which is technically apparently a Tor.com book. I didn't know that, but we're not reading it during Tor.com week. So I'm excited for this. I'm really hoping I like it. And I also have Children of Time that I just got in from my library and I want to get into that. A lot of people have been reading it in the Patreon buddy read chat and I just want to be in on it because everyone's having a really fun time and I'm really hoping I will too. So I need to read that and spoiler vlog it for them. And then, 
who knows? I don't know. I, I know those two are for sure what I want to get to. And, you know, I still have a fair bit of Shadow of the Short Days because I, I still have a bunch. And I feel like that'll probably get me through to the Tor.comathon. And then I'll have my own vlog for that with all of those books. But that's it for this wrap up. I am really impressed with what I've been able to accomplish, but mostly it's because I've been really liking what I've been reading and I've been in a good reading mood. So hopefully I can keep that momentum up. Let me know how your month's doing. How are you doing with your readathons? I am on track to get all of the uh, uh, magical readathon prompts done. And yeah, I don't know what emoji you should leave. Um, I'm just looking at all these books around me and none of them are that exciting. Um, a hand for middle game. I really love this book so much. Maybe I'll actually do a standalone review for it. Maybe after Seasonal Fears are, is out or something. Because I just really love this book. and But it's one of those loves where I don't know how to talk about it. But like if you liked it. Subscribe if you want to. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.